once the comic is made and ready to go to print, uh, what are some channels that you can pursue to uh, publicize and market the comic and build some heat behind the title? Uh, go to conventions and show it to editors. Mm -hmm. I'd also um, consider whether or not you want to, um, I mean, you probably, if, if you, you'll want to do print copies and you'll probably want to go to Kablam or someplace like that to do it. You don't want to go to big print house and, and print two or 3,000 copies of one issue. Don't ever do mass, you know. Um, Unless money printings. is no issue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, or, or storage space because, you know, <laughs> you might sell 200 of them. Yeah. You know, but uh, I mean, consider your outlets. You know, I mean, like I said, you can you can go to Comixology, submit Amazon, and um, have a, a book available digitally worldwide. You know, and you can at least tell people that you're probably not going to sell many, but you can at least tell people you have a distributed book. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you do need you do need print copies. Like I say, go to go to Kablam and place like that and do it. There was, and I, I think we've kind of we've kind of shifted a little bit in the in the way we 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 promote things now. It it seems with the the ability to you know to to put something up online or put something at Comixology or that kind of thing. Um, it seems almost pointless now to hype something before it comes out. Mm -hmm. You start hyping and you put a hyperlink in there so that you know they can go buy it immediately. Yeah. You know you start if you start you know before the book is done, building up an anticipation of it, then by the time it's actually done, it, you know, you've, you've lost some steam there. You've lost sales that you could have gotten. Yeah, I'm like my podcast friends are like, um, when's your book coming out? I'll have you on the show right after it comes out yeah. so we can push out a link. You know, If you wanna go on and just talk about it coming out next week, people are gonna forget five minutes later. You know, pre pre-ordering is a big thing if you're working for a major publisher. <laughs> yeah, you 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 want to do some promotion. <laughs> yep. But if but, you're going uh, to be in the diamond catalog, yeah, yes. Then yeah, yeah, that's important. But uh, but but the number of independent comics being produced versus the number of independent comics that are in the diamond catalog now, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, there's a huge disparity. Yeah. So you know, pre-selling, pre-ordering isn't nearly as important for independent creators as it once upon a time was. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, in your first time out, I always uh, for your first time out, just 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 think about self-publishing. And if it's if it's good, um, somebody you know if somebody wants to pick it up, then you haven't hurt anything by putting it out on on Comixology. You know, you can just pull it right. and let let the publisher put it out. But I I, I always advise just just self-publish the first time, get to know the ropes, because you, you can make mistakes um, when you're doing it yourself, and the stakes the stakes are low at that point. You can always pull it if you decide you don't like it. You know. Do you find, just for the panel in general, do you find that pushing a single one-shot graphic novel is a little bit easier to mount PR for than trying to do something that you're eventually going to do as a serialized Ongoing. book? Ongoing. Yeah. yeah, because I, I can remember that almost, almost everything I've heard about on the news and in any kind of feature, um, when the, the graphic novel about Brian Epstein came out, that there was a lot of that on the news when Representative John Lewis, they had the comic book about, the, mm -hmm. or the, excuse me, the graphic novel, God March. Forbid, as Will yeah. Eisner comes back from the grave and chokes <laughs> me to death. Um, it just seems like those have a longer, a longer life, so it's easier to promote those. Well, my experience at, at comic shows is that, um, and, and I go to a lot of shows with, with Barry, is my experience is there is I, I take a lot of my, end of, my the, the floppies, right, the single issues, People almost don't look at those anymore, you know. Mm -hmm. They because I have the graphic novels there with me. I have the I have the individual comics. I have the graphic novels. People almost don't look at those. They just yeah. they they gravitate towards the graphic novels. And and you know even though the the price point is is higher on a graphic novel than a than a floppy, um, still that's ninety percent of what I sell at a show. Yeah, true enough. The complete but, story. But yeah, but yeah. at the but at the same time, if if you're a young creator, I think you have to do. 20 and 24 page stories because the commitment of time and resources to do a full size graphic novel is so enormous. Mm -hmm. Yes. You need to be focusing on learning how to finish things. You know? Yep. Gotcha. You need to be learning how to do that 20 so you, to 24 page story. You think it ought to be a one shot? It it, maybe, <laughs> but, but you know, comics, if, you, if your goal is, is to sell in comic shops, mm -hmm. the, the, the dominant uh, model in comic shops is serialized storytelling. Mm. Yeah. The the retailers want their audience coming back or their customers coming back week after week to pick up their books on Wednesday. Mm. So they need story, serialized storytelling. So that's the model at Marvel, DC, you know, and, and Image and Dark Horse. That's the model, serialized storytelling. So if that's what you want to do, 
If you want to learn your craft, you need to focus on learning how to finish a 20, 24 page segment of a story. Once you've mastered that and you've got the time and the resources to devote to a, you know, to a bigger project and that's what you want to do, go for it. That's what I make my class do. So yeah. Like, yeah. I know the, the guys at Image told me, because I asked, I asked once, why don't they do more like, you know, digital issues and then just print the trades because the, the financial resources um, to print individual in issues and send them out are, are, are staggering, but they're like, well, you know, especially for, you know, writers that aren't, or writers, artists, teams, whatever, that are lesser known, we got to get the issues out every month because that's like, it's like PR for the trade. It's like PR for the person. If you if if they see my name on the stand every month for the next eight months, they're gonna they're gonna know me. Um, if they just if you just put out one trade or two trades a year, you know. But then that ends up being you know when the the onus is on the creator to front all the capital to get the book done. That makes life very difficult. But you know it's a difficult game anyways. Nobody ever said it was easy. So. so we touched on a, a handful of things. Obviously, the conventions are a big thing, but uh, someone mentioned podcast, and and that's something you can do. Reach out to podcasters who do uh, comic shows, right? Re reach out to YouTubers who do who, who review full issues of uh, of comic <laughs> books, you know, and 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 you know, don't be afraid. Uh, don't be afraid to give away a bunch of copies. Uh, obviously, you, you know you're in it. You want to make you know you want to make the money. But when you're first out of the, the shoot, don't be afraid to give away copies. And I don't just mean give away. Your friends should go buy them, right, uh, to support you. But give them away to editors. Give them away to reviewers. Give them. Don't be afraid to to give a, a healthy chunk of them away. You know, hoping that you're going to get get sort of some coverage from that. 